Raider Nation, happy new league year. Spam it down in the comments. We got some breaking news here on the Raiders report. The Las Vegas Raiders have gone out and they have signed running back Brandon Bolden. They've also decided to cut Nick Kwiatkowski. In terms of the Brandon Bolden move, this one makes a lot of sense to me. This has been a move that I brought up, and in fact, in the video that I released five days ago, Bolden was mentioned as one of the most likely running backs that the Raiders go out and get because of his connections to the Raiders. I said that I believe that the Raiders show the most interest in James White, which the Raiders showed interest in James White. White decided to go back to New England, which then means Brandon Bolden was the next guy to go ahead and bring in. He had 44 carries last season, 226 yards, one touchdown. He also, which is why the Raiders went out and got him, because they needed the new pass catching back. He had 49 targets last season, 41 catches, 405 yards, two touchdowns, picked up 21 first downs by being able to catch the football. What does that mean for Josh Jacobs? What does that mean for Kenyon Drake? Absolutely flipping nothing. You now have your Jalen Richard replacement. The contract details on Brandon Bolden have yet to be released. As soon as we get them, we will go ahead and break it all down for you. I do think that this means that you're going to see a heavy workload for Josh Jacobs. That means they're going to pound Jacobs into the ground. He's not going to get his fifth-year option. Then Austin La Vista baby for Jacobs in 2023. And then the way that Kenyon Drake's contract set up is I see Drake coming back in 2023, him also getting his work. But the other thing that Brandon Bolden does better than Josh Jacobs, that he does better than Kenyon Drake, is pass block, which is something that the New England Patriots and every single quarterback values. And Brandon Bolden is a good pass blocker. So you have a third down running back, you go ahead and you bring him in. You knew the Raiders were going to go with a running back by committee because it's just always what the Patriots have done. So let's go back to school now, y'all. What should have grade the signing of Brandon Bolden? A, you absolutely love it. B, it's a good move. C, it's an average move. D, it's a bad move. F, you absolutely hate it. The grade I'm going to go ahead and give this is a C. I expect to see it happen. However, I also knew that the Raiders were interested in a third down running back. And I just wanted to make it vocal that if you see people talking about trade rumors around Josh Jacobs, to me, it just screams that they don't understand football, that they don't understand how this whole organization is going to end up going. And I would tell them, maybe you need to get some better Wi-Fi. That's all I got to say. The Brandon Bolden move, he's going to be a good third down running back. He's going to be a pass catcher, and he's going to be somebody that you see come in, fill that Jalen Rashard role, and be somebody who you can rely on in those two-minute warning situations. Also, he's a lot bigger than a lot of other third down running backs. Five foot eleven. 220 pound type of dude and for the Raiders I, I kind of like this move here from top to bottom so this is his career 283 career carries okay keep that in mind that's 4.7 yards per carry with 100 catches for 902 yards Bolden showed me this past season that he is able to be a solid pass catcher and he was thrown into a role. He is 31 years old. He was drafted in 2012 and he spent his almost entire career with the New England Patriots. He did go to the Miami Dolphins in 2018, but as a running back with this much wear and tear on him, he's played in over 16 games, eh, over 14 games in every year since 2014. I think that's pretty damn impressive. That wasn't the only move that just happened as soon as the new league year hit. The Las Vegas Raiders also released Nick Kwiatkowski. He would have made $8.3 million in 2022. And the reason why this is interesting is because a few days ago, I talked about, and actually two weeks ago, I talked about cut candidates. And I said if Nick Kwiatkowski gets released after June 1st, it would be $1.25 million in dead money. You'd save $7 million. However... Remember, the Raiders, they've already designated Carl Nassib, which happened today. They cut him. They also designated Corey Littleton post-June 1st cuts, which means you can only do two of those. So, therefore, if the Raiders wanted to move on from Nick Wachowski, they had to do it now. So, it's going to be $5 million in dead money. It's going to save the Raiders about $3.24 million in total dollars. Now, the dead money, or the money in terms of uh, Littleton and Carl Nassib, you're going to get that money after June 1st. The money for Nick Kwiatkowski, the extra three mil, you'll get that right away. When Kwiatkowski was signed to the Raiders for a three-year, $21 million deal in the offseason, 
in the 2020 offseason, I thought it was a good move. I thought Kukowski was going to be able to bring a lot. He was a better fit in Paul Gunther's system than he was a better fit in the past year system in Gus Bradley. He had a lot of injuries last season. I've spoke to Kukowski. Him and I, I would say are pretty good friends. He's told me that he wanted to remain a Raider, and now I would say the best of luck to him and some of the teams that I could see him landing on. He grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, he's told me he wants to be a Steeler, or he also told me Chicago Bears, so keep that in mind. To make sure you guys never miss anything going on around free agency, trades. If the Raiders make a big-time trade today, make a big-time signing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be breaking it all down for you. And if you're looking for Raiders content, 100% free. It's a short-term deal, though. Only for the next 365 days, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because if you miss it, I'm going to say that's a you problem. It's not a me problem. There's a reason why we have 110,000 subs. We are built different here at the Raiders Report. Let's look at some of Kwiatkowski's numbers over the past five seasons. And 2019 was his best year. 76 tackles, three sacks, forced two turnovers with the Chicago Bears. Then in 2020, Raiders named him captain. Put a green dot on the back of his helmet, which meant he was the one getting the play calls from the defensive coordinator. He was the quarterback of the defense. Thought he had a pretty good year. 81 tackles, one sack, two turnovers. Then in 2021, had some injuries pile up. The Raiders put him as a backup linebacker, though. I have always liked what I've seen out of him. He can be a good player, and there's going to be a team out there that's very happy. If the Raiders wanted to bring back Nick Wachowski as a special teamer and a backup linebacker, I'd also be okay with that. But this is what this is proving to me, right? If you want to talk about bad moves, and I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to try to pull up this as quick as I possibly can. And while I'm pulling this up, let me know down in the comment section, do you like the Raiders cutting Nick Wachowski? I want you to go ahead and type Y for yes, or I want you to go ahead and type your N for no. But if you want to talk about how bad, okay, how bad John Gruden and Mike Mayock were. Look at the 2019 draft was bad. The 2020 draft in the first round also bad. What about this from a 2020 offseason point? I'll tell you about it after you get your votes in. Why for yes and for no do you like the Raiders cutting Nick Wachowski? I'm going to go ahead and say from a personal standpoint, no, quits my boy. But from a Raiders standpoint, yes, it makes sense. The Raiders needed to absolutely go ahead and do this. It's a, it's a move that really, really did, truly, make a lot of sense for this team. Even though it's a $5 million dead cap hit. But let's look at the Raiders' 2020 offseason, shall we? And Curtis of Marcus Mosher on Twitter. The Raiders signed Corey Littleton. He's been released. The Raiders signed Demarius Randall, cut before week one. Signed Jason Witten. Come on, Jason Witt was washed up. Signed Carl Nassib, uh, already released. Signed Marcus Mariota, threw three passes, or three, threw three 30 passes. I don't know what that means for him. Uh, gave Richie Incognito a contract extension. Played two games since 2019. Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett, drafted Lynn Bowden, traded before he ever played, and then you drafted Tanner Muse in round three. Plus, you signed Trent Brown. You signed a whole bunch of other bums. You traded for Antonio Brown. John Gruden and Mike Mayock were about as big of a disaster as you could possibly have had. And yet the Raiders still made the playoffs last season. Let's think about that for a second. Also, some other moves that went down today. The Raiders went out and they signed Chandler Jones, who had 107 and a half sacks in 139 career games. He signed a three-year, $51 million deal, which personally... I think it's pretty damn good value for the top free agent entering free agency today. One of the top edge rushers. And if you're trying to slow down Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, go get yourself Chandler Jones who feasts on Russell Wilson. Courtesy of a super chat we had earlier on today's show from your nightmare who literally said Chandler Jones has literally got like 14 and a half sacks or maybe it's 17. It's a lot of sacks against Russell Wilson. And since 2016, the most sacks in the NFL goes to Aaron Donald, who he honestly is probably the best player in the NFL. Oh, and then it's Chandler Jones at 70 and a half. That's also not the only move that went down today. The Las Vegas Raiders, they traded away Unique Gakwe, pair him back up with Colts' new defensive coordinator, Gus Bradley. Unique Gakwe, you get Rocky Sin. 
Personally, I think Gakwe is a better player than Rocky Sim. However, when you look at overall need, if you're telling me right now, okay, release Carl Nassib, you go out and sign Chandler Jones, which then equals us going out and getting a top 20 corner in Rocky Sim, filling a bigger need, I'm okay with it. I'll miss Unique Gakwe a lot, but the worst season Gakwe ever had was in a 3-4 defense when he played for Baltimore. Maybe that was one of the reasons why the Raiders didn't decide to keep him. But top 20 PFF overall grade amongst cornerbacks last season. Fifth highest in man coverage. A 72 overall grade in coverage. Rocky Sin is a tough mother effort, and I know Raider Nation is going to like him a lot. So I asked this question yesterday. I asked it this morning, and I'm going to keep asking it. I want you to rate the Raiders' offseason move so far. Scale it from 1 up to 100. 1, you absolutely hate it. 100, you absolutely love it. A few hours ago, I would have said 70. Actually, a few hours ago, I would have said like a 50. Then after the move of Chandler Jones, trade for Rocky Sin, 70. Now the addition of Brandon Bolden. The cut in there, Kukowski, I'll say I'm somewhere between a 74 and a 75. If you haven't subscribed to the Raiders Report yet, please take that second. Make sure you do. I don't know about y'all, my family, we talk sports. My friends, we talk about sports. When I go out and I interact with people in public, I love the guy who likes to try to talk, talk sports, right? They always try to talk sports. I feel like I know more sports than you guys, uh, or the guy that I'm watching. And if you want to know more than the people out there, you just want to be able to interact with people more, this is the channel for you. If you're just getting into the National Football League, you know we got viewers from Switzerland like Max Crosby. We got people from all over the world, no doubt about it. This will channel will not only educate you, but tell you what the Raiders need to do to go ahead and chase that fourth Lombardi.